thought I knew all I could about workouts until I saw this WWE star absolutely rock my world. I've been training for some time now. I won my natural pro card in bodybuilding in 2020 and now I'm still competing in the NPC and coaching hundreds of people. I think that I have the qualifications to say that I sort of know what I'm doing. Yet here today, we're looking at a WWE superstar who might actually prove me wrong. And because of that, you might take away some lessons from this video or I might take away some lessons for this video. And towards the end of this video, I do want to offer some advice to how you can improve your workouts, build muscle strength, and maintain a great deal of size outside of just the normal workouts you see people doing. WWE superstar is Roman Reigns. Apparently he's kind of the new thing right now. He's in the very hot spot or the hot seat, whatever you'd like to call it. And I wanted to observe his training and he also has a full day of eating, which if you're interested in seeing that, I'll do a whole nother video on it. But I really wanted to dive in deep and kind of take this into consideration. Like, What is he doing that's making him such a superstar? He has a pretty decent physique. If you can pop one up right here, you'll kind of see this dude's jacked. I mean, he's for general population, pretty big. Men's Health has posted a great video for us detailing what it's like to train like this man. I, I mean, he didn't really add much context there. He said he likes to build strength, but also likes to pay attention to what he's looking for or looking, trying to look like. And I, I think I agree with him. Strength is, while attached to hypertrophy and cross-sectional area, which is the size of a muscle increasing, it doesn't always dictate the outcome. And you see this with Phil Heath, for example. When he does bicep curls, and maybe we can throw up a video here. When he does bicep curls, he doesn't look like he's using a lot of weight in these certainly not. He's going for more of the feel and tension, but also what Roman has said, the contraction. And he's focusing on that sort of aspect of the workout. There's a difference between internal tension on a muscle and external. And external is kind of what a lot of people feel when they're going for strength. For example, one rep max. But internal tension is sort of the things you don't necessarily feel all the time. And that can happen when you're going to 12 to 20 reps on a movement and creating a lot of metabolic pump or what you would see as like the burn and filling of that muscle, which is a good thing. So I don't necessarily disagree with him here, but I would hopefully assume that this isn't necessarily his real workout because the weights are absolutely tiny. I think they're 60 pound dumbbells. And granted for him, that might be what he lifts, but I just think that most people, even smaller than this individual, would probably be lifting more. And I would encourage you to as well. I really like this is actually one of my favorite. You want to have a good back. Now, what I do like about him exercising, he's very slow and controlled. Now, obviously, again, I don't think he's using the weight that he might actually be using in a real workout, but the, the slow and controlled method, we, we know that muscles really grow the most when they're in a lengthened position and we're in that eccentric portion of the movement or the negative portion of the movement. For example, in this, when he's lowering the dumbbells, he's going very slow and that's gonna achieve you the best hypertrophic result outside of just going really fast and like shaking the weight up and down, which can work for some people. Sam Selleck being one of them, but I think for the majority of people who aren't an exception, this is probably the best way to work out. He did say something about this is the best movement for him to feel his back and everyone's a little bit different. And I think he's absolutely correct there. Everyone is different and just biomechanically speaking, we have different insertion points, attachment points for each muscle, meaning like maybe my chest inserts by my humerus, but it inserts higher than your chest, which might insert an inch lower, which changes the mechanics of our chest and could make me a better suitable person for a decline chest press and make you a better suitable person for an incline chest press. And all this to say is not to overcomplicate things, but trial and error works really well if you're trying to build as much muscle as possible. Movement allows me to really hit uh, in the intense. <sighs> I don't even really know where to start with correcting the form because it's very hard to do and people have certain beliefs that they're very emotionally attached to. But generally speaking, I would say that rounding the back isn't a big issue when you're doing this particular movement. Again, this is more of a general population thing that was stated long ago and has been retained. Actually, if you can tuck your rib cage and have that thoracic spine sort of extend so that the spine is neutral. And in this case, you can see that his spine towards his tailbone is kind of like this. So his tailbone's here and then he dips down and then it comes back up because he's his back up like this and that's not a straight spine I think arguably what people are trying to 
assert is that keep your back straight. They want a straight neutral spine. So while he's looking up like this, he's creating curvature within his spine up here. And then he's also tilting his chest up so far that his back is also introverted like this. So what I would tell him to do is tuck your rib cage. Actually don't focus on pushing your butt all the way back, but instead try to arch your rib cage so that you have a neutral back or even a slight, slight round to it, because that way you're going to be able to activate all of the musculature from your lower spine to your upper back, right? The lat is a muscle that attaches from your arm all the way down to your thoracic spine or near your tail tailbone. We want to make sure we can train all those areas. So I'm really curious to see what he has to talk about next, because so far these workouts are very domesticated, I think is the best word. And maybe he has more opinions coming. The next exercise is going to be dumbbell shoulder press. As you I mean, I could have, I could have guessed this. It just looks like he's training the basic. He's like, the guy's like, what, what's your favorite workouts? And he's like, oh, what did I do fucking in high school? Bench press, the row and the shoulder press. And I guarantee you there's going to be a squad in here somewhere. I could be wrong. You can see. Um... I'm also very curious. Funny enough, it looks like he's about to begin the squat. But I'm also very curious. He talks about the shoulder injuries he's had and also that the dumbbells correlate with, he's like, well, I use dumbbells and it's because sometimes we got to pick people up over our arms, which, hey, cool for you, man. Again, I'm still interested to see where he's going with all of this, but I think arguably that statement's kind of flawed in the sense that you can build strength with nearly any shoulder shoulder pressing variation. An anterior delt shoulder press, a barbell shoulder press, a Smith machine shoulder press, a machine shoulder press. The dumbbells are not necessarily the one option that you have to build enough strength to push someone above your body. That being said, again, it is one of my more favorite movements because it has that same converging path that the chest press does using dumbbells. Whereas again, using a barbell, you're pressing outward in a sense, where dumbbells, you're pressing upward and together, which is more in alignment with the bow mechanics of the shoulder. So I can appreciate that. Again, we're seeing the three sets with two uh, 12 to 15 reps. And I just think that, again, this is very basic. You can look at increasing or decreasing that dependent on your needs and weaknesses. Movement is, uh, it's everybody's favorite. Okay, so he does mention a lot of things that I think are useful, but I don't think I was wrong in my assessment initially. When I came into this, I thought that maybe there's something we could take away as a group or collectively from this individual and apply to ourselves, which maybe there was with the whole everyone is different kind of thing and everyone has a different preference and so on and so forth. But I think what his issue is right now is that he is really focused on sort of the old school methods that work for sure if you don't have access to more equipment or knowledge, but arguably for someone who is at the top of the WWE, he could be doing a lot more, a lot more effectively to get better results in a longer career. I think things like squats and these sort of heavy compounds are great until you sustain an injury and then they become unsustainable and you haven't practiced other squat variations, which leads you to be very isolated and cornered in your selection of exercises that you can Perform. So finally, at the end of this, I think what individuals watching this or you yourself might need to take away is workouts are great when they're published by guys like this because it gives you some insight into what they do, but it's not all inclusive and understanding that, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, the whole three set with a 10 to 12 rep scheme that everyone does in general population isn't effective. You can look at the science behind sets required per week to optimize muscle growth and anywhere from eight to 20 sets per week is pretty a much a good standard to optimize each muscle. So let's say I wanted to grow my biceps, well, I'm gonna to want to do at least eight to 20 sets per week on my bicep. Varying that scale, depending on your recoverability is really important, meaning how well are you recovering from the workout? And I also think that following the line of working out different muscles per day is also effective, but incomplete. You can work out, let's say, pushing muscles in one day and get an effective workout done without having to distribute your volume across the day with different muscle groups. So for instance, he trained back, legs, and arms, and chest, which I think by the time you get to your arms, the whole system is already so fatigued that the arm training itself is very ineffective. And I think aesthetically, he could be doing a lot better if he would maybe compartmentalize his training a little bit more and specifically use more structurally braced movements and allow himself to maybe even lift a little bit more weight. But I'd love to hear what you think down below in the comment section. Please tell me, is this a good workout and should we trust Roman Reigns with our ability to grow muscle? He's aesthetic, he's pretty jacked, I guess. What do you think? I will see you in the next video. Deuces.